Greetings, students. I apologize for the poor sound quality, but I left my nice microphone at school. Uh, I wanted to talk about the second homework problem, in which you search a two-dimensional grid of strings for a particular word that is oriented down and to the right, so diagonally down and to the right. All right. Um, I think a good way to start these is always with a picture. The picture might be in your head, and that's fine if you can do it, but if you have trouble thinking about these problems, the wrong way to do it is to just sit and start typing. The right way to do it is to sit down and actually think, what would you do to solve this problem in a 2D grid? So here's an example of a 2D grid. Let's pretend I'm searching for the word hello. A good step-by-step -step process for this might be the way that you start many other problems. You could loop through every possible starting position, and for each of those starting positions, you could search diagonally down. You could say, is this H-E-L-L-O? And if the answer is yes, you've solved it. Otherwise, you just go on to the next starting position. All right, a couple of things to notice. Um, if I loop through every single square in the whole grid, some of those will go out of bounds when I uh, could, when I do my search for the individual word. So it, down here, it would go out of bounds to the bottom, so the row would be too large. If I started here, it would go out of bounds to the right, so the column would be too large. If I started here, both would be too large. So whenever you're thinking about looping through any type of array, you always want to explicitly think about when might this go out of bounds. That's the majority of the errors I've been seeing from the class. So let's code up the, the outline of the solution to start. Here I am. I can start by saying, uh, let's see, int row equals zero, row is less than grid.length. I'm not doing my bounds checking right now. Oops, int, excuse me. Or or int column starts at zero, column is less than grid zero dot length, column plus plus. All right, this would successfully loop through every single element in the 2D grid. As I was just saying, I don't want to do that, though, uh, because I need to stop it before it would go out of bounds. So how do I know where to stop it? <clears throat> Let's think about what I need to be true. Um, if I'm starting at a particular row and column, let's do the two directions separately. How far down am I going to go in my search? Uh, well, it must be the number of letters that I'm searching, because each new letter takes me down by another row. So what needs to be true about my starting row is that my starting row plus the length of the word has to be smaller than the first thing that will take me out of bounds. So if I start here and I say H-E-L-L-O, I failed because uh, the ending row is not within the grid. It's not smaller than grid.length because grid.length is the first row that will be out of bounds. Similarly, uh, each letter I check is taking me up by one column. So my starting column plus the word length has to be less than the column that would be out of bounds. All right, um, it's not too hard if you think about it with a picture. It is hard if you just sit at a blank screen and try and code. Um, I hope this is not being unfair to you, but I am beginning to get the suspicion that some people, when they do the problems, uh, think that they'll just type in whatever seems like it will probably work, and they'll just turn that in, and that will be good enough. I want to be really clear, that is not good enough, um, and I'm really happy to give partial credit right up until the time that I think that the mistakes you're making are from laziness and not from a genuine misunderstanding that you're trying to work through. Um, I'm getting close to my line, and when I reach the line, I'm not going to give partial credit anymore, and then it's going to be really sad for everybody. So you need to do the, your best to convince me that you are actually thinking about the issues that we repeatedly talk about, such as this out-of-bounds checking. All right, let's actually code up the solution. So as I was just saying, uh, this is going to search through every element, but I want it to be true that the row plus the word length is less than what's out of bounds, and the column plus the word length is less than what's out of bounds. And now I can say something like, 
if contains word, if the grid contains the word starting at that row and column, and here's the word, then I can return true because I found it. Otherwise, if I get through all of that looping and I've never found it, I can return false at the end. All right, this is, we've talked in the past about using helper methods. This is a great way to control the complexity of the problem is by separating out this particular piece of it. So let's make this method. Uh, public static boolean contains word, and it'll be a 2D in called grid. We got a row, we got a column, and we have a word. Okay. Oh, not in. String. Alright, so how do I need to loop? Um, I don't need a nested for loop because I don't need to loop through uh, a two-dimensional structure. What I'm actually looping over is I'm looping over the number of letters in the word. So if I'm starting here, I only need to loop, if I'm searching for the word hello, I only need to loop five times. Um, one for each letter of the word. So, I'm going to write one loop. Uh, I guess we could even call it uh, letter equals zero, letter is less than, or dot length, letter plus plus. So if you want to actually get out, um, well, uh, maybe I should have called it location. Letter value seems like an extremely awkward thing to call this. Um, but if you want to get out the letter to start with, that's okay. Because um, that might make it easier to think about. So now I'm looping through every single letter. I'm getting each letter out of the string I'm searching for once at a one at a time. And I want to compare that to successive elements that are going right and down in my 2D grid. So let's get each element out of the 2D grid. Um, I'll call it grid letter. And I'll access the grid at the row and column. That's my starting row and column. And a lot of people were set, checking to see, are these things equal? And if they are equal, you can maybe count how many times they're equal. And then at the end, see if the number of times the letters were equal is the same as the length of the word. That must mean every single letter was equal. That's an okay way to do it. I think it's more efficient to search to see... Uh, each for, sorry for each letter test to see if it's not equal because if it's not equal it's not even worth checking the rest of the letters you can exit immediately so let's do that I'll say if it's not true that the letter value equals the grid letter uh, then I know that two letters were not equal and so the whole word can't be equal so I can immediately return false and then if I finish this whole process I can return true what am I missing um, I'm doing all this looping, but I'm not actually changing the grid letter I'm getting. So let's do this. After I get out the grid letter, I'll increment the row and the column. That's one way you could do it. Uh, if you wanted to keep your row and column variables the way they were, you could add in the index. So the first time through, I got row plus zero, column plus zero. And then as this goes up, the next grid letter I'll access is row plus one, column plus one, which is the same as going diagonal down by one. All right, so I believe uh, this should all be working. If I was doing this as a homework assignment, I might write a little test case right here, or a couple of test cases, just to make sure that I have it correctly. I hope this was helpful. Uh, good luck on your new homework.